YouTube! Conference finals are over. We now know who's going to be playing for the Stanley Cup. What a bizarre, bizarre NHL playoff season this has been. From the format and all the extra teams that got in with the qualifying round and everything to the fact that they're playing in the bubble and there's no crowd and they've got fake sound effects and stuff. Um, to the two teams that are going to be playing for the Stanley Cup Final. Uh, the whole thing has been bizarre. And I've commented uh, on all the rounds so far about how they, like there's been... In that first round, there was no sweeps and no game sevens. Like it was all in between, and then that and that's kind of continued these weird trends round by round. To kick off the conference finals, um, just like with the round before it, so many series went to three one. Both of these series went to three one uh, in the conference finals. So um, we'll start in the West, I guess, uh, because my front runner for the Stanley Cup was Vegas. That's who I was kind of going for, and I really felt. Of all the teams, they were kind of the deepest and uh, and the most well-rounded team, I guess. And I was fully expecting them to get to the finals. Not without a good fight from Dallas, of course, but um, I, I was kind of believing they were going to be the ones to, to come out of the West. But uh, things didn't go their way in the conference finals. <sighs> Again, goaltending was another issue. Uh, in the first game, the, the Golden Knights called Fleury's number uh, to, to go in the net, and uh, the first shot of the game went in, and that was the only shot of the game that went in either goal. So they ended up losing one nothing on that first shot, and you can't really blame Fleury. I mean, he only gave up one goal. The team can't score behind him. You know, what are you going to do, right? Uh, second game, they went back with Leonard. Uh, he won 3 nothing. That tied things up at 1-1. Uh, at but then after that, Dallas reeled off three wins in a row, all of which were one-goal games. Uh, I believe two of them were by a score of 3-2, one of them was by a score of 2-1, and two of those games went to overtime. So, let's be honest here, that's a five-game series that very much was more like a seven-game series. Uh, every game was close outside of maybe that second game that was 3 nothing for, for the which was only Vegas's only win. Uh... And, and again, it was a, a very big goaltending uh, situation with Fleury getting that first nod and then Leonard going the rest of the way. And then in, in, in Dallas's corner, uh, Bishop, Bishop was still out, so Kudobin, their backup, has, has been the guy who's been running with the ball and he's been lights out. So, you know, that's like one thing that maybe you would have thought of as a weakness, Dallas having to play their backup so much. And he's come in and kind of stolen the show. And that's kind of what Vegas ran into in the Vancouver series as well. Um, you know, Demko came in when Markstrom got it, uh, injured and reeled off two really good performances in a row that extended that that series to seven games and kind of maybe um, wore, wore Vegas out a little bit and also maybe got them second-guessing themselves a bit offensively when they couldn't score against this guy. And maybe that bled into the Dallas series too with Kudobin. Kudobin's performance and stuff because honestly if you were to look at the game stats after each game Vegas did carry the play in the overall um, uh, over the course of that series uh, against Dallas so I still think they were the better team but you know that that's why you get a good goalie um, a hot goalie in your corner and and that can make all the difference right so now Dallas isn't a bunch of slouches I really like Dallas and I'm going to be cheering for them in the cup finals uh to win it all because um of all the teams in the West that that were in the hunt, I was really hoping for either Edmonton or Chicago, but after they were both eliminated, um, you know, Vegas and Dallas were probably the next couple of teams that I was uh, I was really hoping that would make it. So uh, I can't complain about Dallas making the Cup final and uh, and and having a chance at winning it all. So over in the East with Tampa and the Islanders, that one again got off to a 3-1 uh, start with Tampa in the lead there. But the Islanders were able to come back and make more of a fight of it than, than Vegas did against Dallas. The first game was, I believe, an 8-2 steamrolling by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, that kind of set the tone for that series. But uh, the Islanders didn't let that phase them. You know, Tampa had uh, eliminated Columbus in five games at that point, so they were rested and sitting there and waiting for their next opponent. 
uh, going into that conference finals, whereas the Islanders went in the distance and with the full seven games against Philadelphia. So they were probably, and, and had a quick turnaround into that Tampa series. So they were probably tired and not quite with it. And that could possibly explain that eight to two uh, drubbing. Um, uh, and then from that point onwards, the Islanders climbed back into it. And outside of a couple of games, uh, a 5-3 Islanders win and a 4-1 Tampa win that came in the, in the ensuing games, the rest of the series was really close. Uh, Tampa won last night, uh, taking the series in six games. But of the remaining games, um, I think there was three 2-1 games. So in two of those games... Uh, went to overtime and one of them to double overtime. So the series, even though the Islanders looked overmatched at times and stuff like that, um, they're the type of team, they talked about it a lot, how they rely on their system, their defensive system and their, and their physicality to um, uh, compete against teams like Tampa who are a lot more stacked in terms of talent, you know, compared to, to what the Islanders have. So they really made a go of it. And, uh, and, uh, listening to some of the commentary on the sports shows, you know, Tampa having, having been up three to one, um, but then having the series extended a bit and, and maybe paying more of a physical price against the Islanders who threw a lot of hits at them. Uh, Braden point missed a game or two here and there because he got injured. Um, although he did play last night. So maybe this series against the Islanders has possibly taken a toll on Tampa a little bit. And, uh, this series here, goaltending finally became a non-issue. <laughs> uh, both of the starters for both teams, you know, uh, pretty much played. Well, I think Vasilevsky played the entire series, uh, and Varlamov, um, I don't know if he played the full series. I think they might have brought Grice in at some point, probably during that 8-2 opening game. Um, but for the most part, Vol Varlamov was the guy in the New York net, and he played really well. So um, it's too bad they couldn't force a Game 7 and maybe maybe uh, uh, have a run at going to the Cup and facing Dallas. But ultimately, in the end, Tampa prevailed. and So now we have a Dallas-Tampa Stanley Cup Finals, which that's just like these two southern states... Uh, facing off in Canada's great game from the north, you know, and it's like I'm not sure how into this final I'm gonna be. I don't really like Tampa. I've I don't like a lot of their players. Uh, despite I've said this before, despite how stacked in terms of talent they are, I find them super boring. It's just I don't like them. I don't like them, and I don't hate them like I would hate, say, Montreal or Ottawa or Philly or somebody like that or Buffalo. I just that. Like I said, I just find them boring and uninteresting, and I just I just don't like them. Um, fortunately, I do like Dallas to a certain degree, so I really hope Dallas is able to take it. But you know, if if Tampa is able uh, or does come out on top, um, my my one bright side is that Luke Shen. You know, uh, like I, I commented on him in my last video. You know, a former first round Leaf pick who I really liked his style of play. Um, stay at home defender with big hits, fights, you know, um, he's a guy that probably really the only guy on that team that I'll be happy for to win a cup. It'll be nice to see, I guess, Stamkos win a cup after being their captain for so long, but he's, he's injured. He hasn't even played. So, you know, uh, so that's kind of less of a factor anyway. So, so Luke Shen winning a cup would be my lone bright side to Tampa winning the cup, but, uh, I really hope Dallas can do it. So this is going to be interesting. Goaltending is going to be huge because both of these goalies have been on top of their game and haven't really faltered at all. Uh, maybe the odd little bobble here and there, but but for the most part, they've both been on top of their game. So I expect that to continue through the finals. So it's really going to be probably one of those series that it's going to be, you know, they're going to have to take advantage of every opportunity they get and, and, uh, and it's going to be... I, probably hard to come by in terms of goals i don't think i don't foresee many high scoring games in this series um despite the level of uh talent that both teams kind of have on their on their top and forwards and defense right so now it could be wrong who knows you know it's it's like when tampa and the leafs play it turns into a track meet a lot of the time right because they're both so top loaded with with offensive talent um but and Dallas is kind of that way too, with their top line and stuff like that, and their, and their top defenders are are all really offensively gifted players. But it's the playoffs, so if it was Vegas and Tampa, 
I would say we're in for more of a defensive struggle because Vegas will make them play that way. But with Dallas and things being maybe a little more wide open, I don't know, maybe both teams being, maybe we'll let it go a bit and, and turn into a track meet. I don't see it happening because again, like I said, it's playoff hockey, but you never know what can happen, right? So I foresee this being a long, low scoring series, but um, but but it, there is the potential for it to maybe turn into a track meet. So we'll see what happens. Either way, like I said, I'm hoping for Dallas. The only bright side of Tampa wins is Luke Shen. What more can I say? My prediction? My prediction. I'm going to say Dallas in seven. If the Islanders can push Tampa almost to seven games in the conference finals and beat them up a bit like that, I think Dallas... plays can play tough like the Islanders do but they have more talent as well so I I think I think Dallas if as long as Kudobin can hang in there and continue to be that good I think Dallas has a real good shot of, of taking this in a long series and uh and that would be delightful <laughs> so maybe I'm maybe I'm predicting with my heart here instead of my head but uh I really think um if I had to call it, I'm going to call Dallas in seven, which is going to prolong Tampa's uh, playoff uh, Stanley Cup drought uh, that they've had, they've had going here since uh, when did they win it in 04 or 05 or just before the lockout there it was I guess was their first and only cup. And this current version of the Lightning has been sniffing around the cup. They've been in the finals one year and lost to Chicago. They've been in the conference finals maybe I don't know maybe a couple times and, and crapped out once to the Rangers maybe. So, you know, I think they're also talking about like, okay, Tampa's got to start winning cups at this point because they've had many cracks with this roster. So at some point they're going to have to start turning it over and and uh, not necessarily re rebuilding at this point because they've got a lot of good players on their team that they're going to be able to keep a lot of them, but they're also going to have to start giving up a lot of them just because of the cap and stuff like that. So so a lot of people are saying like they, they got to make this their year, right? So, so we'll see. My prediction, Dallas in seven. I'm usually wrong, so bet on Tampa. So long.